Joining me now is the former Bellator featherweight champion, AJ McKee, who has a uh, lightweight fight coming up just announced today. Long Beach, California, man, the uh, the backyard. How excited are you to uh, to return and, and be able to put on a fight there? Oh, man, it's going to be great. Uh, you know, just having all those people come together when I won the championship at the forum was electrifying. So actually uh, having having them come to my city, you know, um, coming, coming to Strong Beach, baby. We coming in strong for the 155-pound division. And uh, that's been the whole motivation, man, is moving up to 155 pounds and uh, just climbing the ranks, man. Get back in there and get a title back around my waist again. Um, obviously... The initial plan wasn't to move up to 155 pounds until I was notified that I'm not going to be allowed to have a rematch with Patricio Pitbull. So once that was established, um, I felt there was nothing left at the 145 pound di division for myself. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to put my body through that cut into 145 pounds for a non-title fight when I know I'm more than capable of moving up to 155 pounds and handling my own there. Yeah, and I think uh, let's just talk about that right off the top then um, in terms of why this fight was made versus the trilogy. It seemed like it's tough on you because on fight night, we're asking you, you know, you just kept coming off a loss. We're asking you, you know, what do you think's next? Do you think it's a trilogy? Do you think it's whatever? And you were saying, you know, no, I, I think I want to go to lightweight. I don't want to do this weight cut anymore. And then it sounded like Bellator's narrative was, well, we're going to run it back. And Scott had talked to AJ and we're going to do it again. And then next scene, we're having you have your lightweight debut, like you said, on fight night. So. How did that all come about? Like, what was why why no trilogy? Um, I'm not quite sure. Obviously, right after the heat of the moment of of having an unsettling loss that I don't feel I lost, and majority of the people don't feel I lost. Um, shit, the statistics, the factual information even said I didn't lose. But um, you know, some people's opinions are their opinions, and like my dad's always said, man, don't leave it up to the judges. But we we thought we were up and i'm quite sure we were but uh with that being said you know just moving on to bigger better things um i had some time to sit down pause take some time off and uh just kind of reflect on everything that's happened and i'm like all right cool we can get a third fight obviously with that being unsettled we're one in one supposedly in my heart we're two and oh but uh i'm looking to make it three and oh um so when when initially we came to uh the agreement or we didn't even come to an agreement they they pretty much said no there will not you you won't be getting a title fight so i said okay well if i'm not getting a title fight then i'm not fighting at 145 pounds and uh with that being said um i was looking to move up to 155 pounds and i believe it was about a month and a half or two months ago where i'm like all right no title fight cool then i'm going to 155 and then we started to look for an opponent once we lock in an opponent, then all of a sudden, magically, Borix is fighting Pitbull for the title in 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 Long Beach, my city. So for me, it's just it's there's a lot of messy stuff. It's Mickey Mouse here, there, there. I don't really care. For me, I'm just excited to fight. You know, um, I hate taking eight months to a year to 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 get back in there, um, especially after like all right, when I finish them in two minutes, I gotta sit out for eight months to get a rematch. And realistically, I didn't even want to rematch him. So it's like, you know, I, I literally starched you in two and a half minutes, bro. But, I mean, the way things have played out, um, it is what it is, man. Um, I'm looking forward to fighting him. Like I've always said, if he wants to fight, bro, we can fight. It is nothing to me but a fade. And I, I want all the smoke. So if he wants to fight, bro, we can fight. It, there's no, you know, win or lose against Borix. You say you want to fight? Let's fight, bro. I don't need any Mickey Mouse up, down, round and round. Like, if we're going to fight, let's fight. If not, beat it, bro. Kick rocks. But to, to, not, to cut to 145 pounds and not have a title fight, uh, there's no point, man. I, I'm more than capable of holding my own ground at 155 pounds, and that's what I'm looking forward to doing. And when you say they, you know, they notified you or I was notified I wasn't going to get a title fight, are you talking about Bellator or, or do you mean that they were trying to set that up and Patricio's side wasn't going through with it? I, I don't know who. I don't really care who. I don't care who, what, when, where, or why. Proof's <laughs> in the pudding, bro. I'm, I'm here to fight. You know what I mean? I'm here to fight. You call me? All right, bet.
I signed the dotted line, I'm showing up, hurt or not, you know what I mean? And I feel like that's the difference between me and a lot of other fights, especially the pit bulls, man. They they do what they want, bro. Like, look at Patricky, he just pulled out of a fight. You're a champ pulling out of the fight. All right, you ain't no champ, bro. First of all, you're not a champ. You never beat a champ. How do you call yourself a champ and you never beat a champ? Pondering thoughts. But it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, I guess how much is that fight on your mind? Like, obviously, he's the guy now. You're, you're, is your attention away from Patricio? Is it is it totally turned to Patricky now? Like, are we lightweight from here on out? Uh, bro, uh, look, you want to see my – look, I'm going to show you my kennel. Let me show you my kennel. I got all three of them right there. <laughs> There's enough space for, for one more right there and maybe another one right there. Actually, I could put them in here. Huh. See, I – like, I don't care, bro. A dog's a dog to me. They just need to be trained. So, for me, if, if if Pitbull wants to smoke, he can get it. Or his brother. Like I said, I'm looking forward to making this a family affair type thing, man. And, uh, yeah, uh, a Pitbull is a Pitbull to me. They just need to be trained a little bit. And I heard you mention it before, you know, fighting at Featherweight. You said you didn't want to have to wait eight, ten months against a fight. In retrospect, like, again, I don't know who's – who was behind that layoff? You, you, you had the win against Pitbull. Everybody was talking about you. And then it seemed like, you know, there was that period of time where we were asking about you constantly and then you were back. So was that layoff in retrospect a mistake? Do you feel like that was detrimental to your performance that night? Um, I'm not going to blame anything on, on anything. You know, at the end of the day, I, I knew I had a job to do and I, I knew what I was getting myself into before the fight. I knew what I was feeling going into the fight not wanting to fight. But like I said, man, even on my worst day, I knew Pitbull couldn't beat me. And that was my worst day. And I still don't feel like he beat me. Um, and if we do get the opportunity to fight again, which I pray we do, I promise you it's going to look a lot like the first fight. Like that was literally my worst day and his best day. And it was it was close. But it, to me, it wasn't close enough, man. Um, the statistics say it all, bro. Like striking, takedowns. All right, you got a couple little leg kicks that – whatever all right a submission that you didn't finish like i i just i try not to pay attention to the to the nonsense anymore man at the end of the day uh either we're gonna fight or we're not you know what i mean if you don't want to fight cool like there can be this continued mix up of oh this person that person and you know i I don't care bro like i don't have time to feed into all that nonsense and bullcrap like call me with a fight date and don't call me in snowboarding season because if I'm in snowboarding season, I'm not going to want to fight, <laughs> especially after I've been sitting around for six plus months and now I'm in snowboarding season. There's only a three, like I'm from California, bro. We get snow for one month in Big Bear. One month. You want to call me while I'm snowboarding? You think I'm going to be excited to cut 30 pounds to make fucking 145? No, bro. I'm trying to enjoy the slopes and enjoy my life a bit, bro. Like, so, I mean, it is what it is. I've learned from it. I'm glad it happened the way that it did. Um, I, I put a lot of pride in, in my undefeated record. And just like 50 Cent said, man, he said, I, I don't mind losing. I really don't mind losing. But I want it to be at my expense, at my cost. And uh, in this situation and circumstances, that wasn't the case. So, yeah, for me, hey, run it back. And yeah, I think we lost it for a second. Yeah, we we got you back. Sorry to sorry to keep her waiting, but um, yeah, actually, uh, I, I when this fight was announced this morning, I actually reached out to Patricio and I asked him for his because I knew I was going to talk to you. So I asked him, you know, why didn't this fight happen? And he said that he was never offered it, and that they offered him Borg, so he thought that that was the biggest challenge in the division, so he took it. That's all bullshit, bro. You're the fucking champ. Do you understand the power in being the champion? No, he doesn't, and that's why he's not the champ. I'm the true champ, bro. If you're the champ, you make the shots, you call it. Hey, I'm the champ. I want to fight AJ McKee again. It's that simple. I'm not fighting anybody else. I'm fighting AJ McKee. That's what I did. You right. you thought the first one was a fluke? All right, cool. Well, shit. We can fight again. I, I'm, I'm not too eager to fight you again literally i finished everybody four for four all finishes like i said i was gonna do and then eight months later in the snowboarding season you want to call hey let's fight pitbull again oh shit Ugh. 
all right, I guess, you know what I mean? Like, just no motivation. But like I said, man, even on my worst day, I knew bro couldn't beat me. And that was my worst day, his best day. And, I mean, the the next fight, if we do fight again, I promise you it's going to look a lot like the first one. And, yeah, I said I was going to finish him in the second. Bro, have y'all ever read The Art of War? Mental warfare is the number one part of war. I'm already in this man's head through his butthole. Like, I'm so far inside of him. He doesn't know what to do. He's emotionally lost. So, if he wants to fight, bro, let's fight. You know what I mean? I'll come back down to 145 pounds because I know he don't want to see me at 155. That Who wants to see me at 155? Maybe the 155ers think they do until they see me. And, and how detrimental do you feel? Let's talk about that. How, how much – AJ McKee at 155 – how much of an advantage do you think you'll be gaining not having to cut those pounds? Like, how much do you feel like you that hurt you as a featherweight, the weight cut? I wouldn't say it hurt me. Um, it, it gave me an advantage, but it's an advantage that I don't need. Um, it's an advantage that taxes on me mentally, physically, um, emotionally. There's just a lot that goes into cutting the weight and making 145 pounds. I walk around 175. Like, I'm, I've, I've been a solid 175 for the past – two months, three months. So for me, man, it, it's just being bigger, faster, stronger. Like as Connor once said, these guys are like stuck in the mud. You know what I mean? So to have 145 pounder speed and then to add 155 pound power. And then we're not even talking about my skill set yet. Like when I show up and I put my mind on doing something like we've seen the result four for four. All finishes. Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna go get Bellator's fastest knockout. All right, I fell a few seconds short, but come on, dog, eight second knockout. Then this, yo, I'm gonna finish this person, finish this person, finish. Like when I put my mind to something, like it, it, there's nothing that's gonna stand in my way besides me. And uh, that last fight, that was that was the fuel that I needed. You know, that was the little fire up under my butt to get me going again that I feel like I needed. Um, now, obviously. Obviously, not getting the rematch. That's a different. Uh, that's a different fire. <laughs> Excuse me. That's a different fire, and uh, I'm not gonna keep breaking myself and and stressing about it. Like, bro, either you want to fight or you don't want to fight. Like, sign the contract. Don't sign the contract. If you didn't want to fight, the man, why'd you sign the contract? I signed the contract against whoever I'm fighting. I forgot the guy's name, Stony or some. I know him. I know him, the redheaded dude. Spike Carlisle. Cool guy. Spike. There we go. Spike. I don't care who it is. I'm just ready to fight, man. I want to fight. I love fighting, bro. I used to fight in alleys. I used to fight in backyards. Like, I'm just trying to fight, man. And I'm not trying to sit around and waste my prime years, 27 years old. Like, there's a lot that I got to do to get back to where I want to be content with myself, you know? And, uh... That's what I'm geared up for right now is just making statements, man. And October 1st, I'm looking forward to going out there and making a statement and uh, getting back to being the mercenary, man. Get that hit list going again. And it seems like you're really balancing the, the, the mindset of like having the fire lit under you. Like maybe, you know, I'm sure you're going to be asked about Patricio forever, like until you guys fight again. So um, is it tough? Is there any sort of mental uh change that you've had to make in the experience of, of the last fight and, and coming off a loss. And, and I mean, the spotlight leading up to that fight, I think was maybe not something we've seen much that ma major of a spotlight in Bellator. I mean, people asking Dana White about you, everybody talking about you, that sort of pressure, that sort of um, that you, that you had on yourself. I mean, was there anything that you were able to kind of, to kind of bring out of that and take away and, and change for the better when it came to you mentally? Uh, definitely. I would say, Finding the motivation to fight, man. Um, that wasn't a fight. Like, I, I just, I wasn't intrigued by it. Like, I starched, bro, in two minutes. You know what I mean? Okay, now we're going to go fight again. Like, whatever. Like, all right, we're going to go fight again. Um, I just, I wasn't in the fight, man. I didn't, I, I wasn't, I wasn't the mercenary. I was just, I was just AJ fighting. You know what I mean? And uh, there was no, there was no kill or be killed. You know, that, that kill or be killed. That, that's what I thrive off of. But obviously, like, that choke he had, all right, cool. Like, bro, you were just holding on to me. Like, you weren't trying to finish it. Like, he was holding me. Like, 
so I'm like, all right, get off of me. Like, ugh, you know what I mean? There was just no, I didn't have no motivation really for that fight. Like, versus now, that's what I'm saying. I feel like it, it, it fired me up a little bit. Like, I, I always wanted to be undefeated, you know, because um, I know I'm the best 145 pounder in the world and I'm one of the best fighters skill set wise in the world just well-rounded like not not too many people are good at striking good at jujitsu and wrestling and kickboxing like if you look at my record 13 finishes it's like literally like four four and four you know what i mean so it's like it's four subs four knockouts four you know like so for me it's just being the best that i can be and i, I really didn't have too much motivation for that fight but after after the interviews and everything after that that fight getting out of my emotions and sitting back taking some time to literally reflect and and see it for what it is all right you know you didn't lose bro cool you didn't lose you got a loss on your record that was the hardest pill for me to swallow why because like i said like 50 cent said i don't mind losing but at my expense at my cost and that wasn't the case so uh yeah I, I want to fight him again, but I, I want to fight him with malicious intent and I want to hurt him. And I've never honestly can say I've wanted to hurt somebody, but I want to retire him. And I think if he beats Pitbull or Borix or whatever, however that turns out, I don't care if he has the title. That's how bad I want to fight him again now. Just to, to solidify like, bro, you are not on my level and you couldn't beat me on my worst day. So now here's my best day. And that's what I'm looking forward to, man, is is either him or his brother, you know? If he don't want it, shit, I'll whoop his little brother too. Like I've always said, I want to make this a family affair. Before Conor McGregor became champ champ, back in 20, what, 16? 2015, I was doing interviews talking about I'm going to be champ champ. So I feel like if, if I would have got the win in that fight, even though I know I won that fight, it would have just the, the trajectory of my career after that. Like, yo, I'm fighting his brother now. I don't care who's in line. I'm, I'm fighting his brother, and that's the next fight. Pitbull again, and I'm going to be a champ champ. That's my goals. That was my goal and my aspiration. But, you know, things work in mysterious ways, and uh, it's, it's playing out just the way it's supposed to, and that, that's just my faith with the man upstairs, man. I just got to continue to be the best that I can be inside and outside of the cage. So uh, that when it does come time to be inside of that cage, I can perform at 100%. And, and, you know, you mentioned earlier, like, you don't really care who you fight. And, you know, you said you, you kind of had trouble even remembering Spike's name a little bit. So clearly you're more worried about what you can bring to the cage. But was there any thought of, like, trying to jump right in? Like, I want the number one contender, lightweight. I want the number two guy, whatever that is. Like, You want to hear my request? Let's hear it. I'm moving 155. Benson Henderson. Fucking banger. Stylistically, bruh. That would be an amazing fight. And that's one of one of my favorite fighters since I was a kid. Benson's that guy. And it would just be an honor to share that moment with him. You know what I mean? Um, he's number two. That throws me right to where I need to be. I mean, outside of that, Pitbull, Patricky. I mean, I don't, I don't consider him the champ. I'll consider him number one contender. Because, like I've always said, to be a champion, you got to beat a champion. That man has not beaten a champion. Therefore, he is not a champion. He's he's holding an intern belt. Until he beats a true champion, I'm not. I'm he's not a champ. I guess let's let's uh, let's end on this, man. People tune in October first. They see you in front of your hometown crowd. You and Spike Carlisle. Uh, how do you break your tie of four four four? What do we think here? Four four four. Strong beats, baby. <clears throat> Strong beats. Y'all gonna see what it is. I don't got nothing to say. No predictions. Nothing. I'm gonna show y'all. That's it. Sounds good, man. I appreciate your time. Good luck with everything. And I'm looking forward to uh, whatever's whatever's coming up, man. It's uh, whatever weight class you're in. We like. I appreciate <laughs> it. We're going to get this 155 real quick. You know what I'm saying? One time for the one time.